I couldn't figure out what this stuff was until it occurred to me when I saw this EQ and I thought, what is EQ? I was like, that seems really familiar. <laughs> it's just jQuery. <laughs> You know, this just makes me wonder, has has this entire video been pointless? I'm still going to post it, all right? And, you, and you're going to think like, Dave, why did you waste my time with all that stuff? I'm sorry. <sighs> wow. Hey everybody, Dave here. So I'm gonna show you a demo of what I built in this video. If you looked at the time, probably pretty long. I have not edited it yet, so I don't know exactly how long, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's over an hour long. I don't expect anybody to stick around for that long. So let me show you what I built and I'm gonna run it for you. And then afterward, if you feel like sticking around and you're trying to learn stuff about Power Automate Desktop, then you can watch the rest of the video and hopefully pick up on maybe things I did wrong or things I did right either way. So uh, the website that I have been working with is called Bitrix24. It's a customer relationship management web application. I'm using the free version. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I'm not suggesting you use the CRM app. If I were going to put a process into production that automates this web application, I would reach out to Bitrix and ask them for approval to automate their user interface using robotic process automation. But in this case, I'm just running a few tests and doing it for demo purposes. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. So let me walk you through the flow that I've built out, then I'll run the demo. We've got a main flow, a launch flow, and get Excel data. What it will do is launch Edge if it's not open already. And whenever it launches Edge, it'll log into the web application. If it's open already, then it's already logged in. After it does that, it'll get data from Excel. I used a website to generate some random data for me, 20 rows of data for various columns, kind of like what I did for rpachallenge.com, except in this case, I had to go tell it what kinds of data I need. And so I used that random data to enter into this website. And then in this for each loop, this is where we're doing the bulk of the work, navigating to a contact screen, and clicking add for each of the text fields that I want to input data into, then we're populating those. And in some cases, we're clicking combo boxes and choosing options beneath that. And then at the end, it closes the web browser. Actually, I'm going to disable closing the web browser at the end so it stays open. So time for a demo. Let's click run. It's going to open Edge. And then once it gets to the login screen, it's going to put in my username and my password. And that's from the input parameters that I've given to it. Once it's in here, it's going to get data from Excel. So you'll, you'll see that pop up really fast in the background. And then it clicks into the contacts screen and then it clicks add. And so it's adding a new contact. So it does salutation, last name, first name, middle name. It also does fields like address, email, phone number, and then there's contact type and source. So some different things you might would want to maintain as data for contacts in your customer relationship management application. While this is running, I just want to say a few things about this video. You may not want to watch the whole thing, and that's completely fine. It's going to be kind of a long video. I haven't finished editing it yet, but it's probably going to be over an hour long, if, if not close to two hours. I built this automation without having really any knowledge of how to work with the selector builder in Power Automate Desktop. I, obviously, I'd used it a little bit for rpachallenge.com, but in that case, I knew the specific syntax that I needed to use for all of the fields. And that really didn't present much of a challenge because I knew the, the specific syntax that I needed, the, the specific pattern. And I didn't really need to understand all the things you can do with selector builder. So something that you'll see in this video is that at one point, I eventually discover what the syntax is in the selector builder. And I'll just tell you up front, it's jQuery. Pains me to say that I didn't realize that, but you can just write jQuery selectors. You can't do, I think, all the things you can do with jQuery, but specifically jQuery selectors, you can put into the selector builder. And uh, that's what it's all based on. So once I realized that, granted, I had to go look up jQuery examples and try to come up with a solution for some of the combo boxes and stuff like that. But once I had that down, it was pretty easy for me to figure out at that point. You're probably going to see me mess up a few times and I, I try one thing after another after another. And rather than cut all that stuff out, sometimes I feel like it might be helpful at the very least for you as a developer using Power Automate Desktop to see that you're not the only one who struggles. And I don't just come up with this stuff on the spot all the time. 
It takes me time. I beat my head against the desk trying to figure out what to do. And I Google a lot and I, I, I try a, a hundred different things before I find the one thing that works correctly. And then I feel dumb because I didn't realize all that time the right way to do it. So if you're there, uh, don't worry. I'm, I'm right there with you. I do the same thing. And in this video, you'll definitely see that. And I apologize if it makes the video too long. I, I, I you know, I'm conflicted about do I want to include everything or do I want to just get to the point? And in the RPA challenge video, I tried for the most part to just get to the point. In this, it I'm I'm showing pretty much every single thing I did, staring at the screen for long periods of time. I'll cut out of the video. <laughs> and you can assume that at certain points when it skips from me talking about something to then uh, talk about something else, I probably cut out time where I was staring at the screen like, how am I going to solve this? And then if I go Google stuff, for the most part, I'm going to keep that out of it. But just to assume I'm reading stuff on W3 schools or Stack Overflow or, you know, the common things that we would look up as developers to try to solve problems. All right, well, it's done. It finished adding 20 contacts. I think that was pretty fast. It's certainly faster than I can type. So I'm going to go into here. We, we disabled the action that closes the browser. So I can go in and see that these are all the ones that I added. If I click into one of these, which by the way, this is totally random data. This is none of these people are real and the data associated with them is not real either. So their phone numbers and stuff like that. So now we're gonna cut over to back in the past when I started developing this. Keep in mind that there's a number of things I learned throughout the video that I know now. I just didn't know then. Things like that you can use jQuery and Power Automate Desktop. Didn't know that at the beginning of this. So you'll see that I, I kind of learned things over time. And by the end of the video, I'm just like, ah! So let's take a look at how much effort it took me to make this automation. In order for me not to have to make up a random data set for me to enter into this website after I've built the automation and power automate desktop, I went to just a random website. Uh, apparently makaroo.com is a thing. It's actually really fantastic. It lets you enter specific fields and then the type of data that you want in that field. And then you can generate a data set off of that. So I've created a number of fields that will match the fields that are over in Bitrix in the uh, contacts area when we add a new contact. And you'll see over that I've also set a few rules. So some of them, for example, the salutations dropdown box asks you to choose one of the four options. You can either not select or you can do one of the four, but there's no options outside of that. I'm going to have those four options across all of the different rows of data. And then things like date of birth, I've put a range of 1940 to the year 2000 and phone number will be in this format. And then the contact type and the source will come from these specific list of choices, which match up to the drop down box choices over here. And I'm going to now generate some data. So let's see how this works. Download the data. Wait, how many rows is this going to give me? I don't think I inputted that. Oh, here we go. So it gave us a thousand rows. I don't actually want that many. I'm going to do 20 rows of data. I think we're going to download it to Excel. So let's try that download. So I've downloaded that spreadsheet locally and let's look at what the data looks like in Excel. All right. So here's the data set. And this looks like pretty much what I was asking for. I wanted a bunch of people and random dates of birth and phone numbers and email address. I don't actually think I needed gender. I should have removed that. Let's go remove gender. I don't know that I need this ID. I'm going to remove the ID just to make it match exactly. So these are the fields that I wanted, and here's the fields that we're going to use. I've removed some of the extra fields that I don't need. I'm going to hit download data to get 20 rows of Excel data. All right, let's make sure that we have all the fields of data, salutation, last name, first name, uh, second name, which I guess is middle name, date of birth, position, phone number, email, address, contact type, and source. So that should be good to go. We'll take all 20 rows of this and we will enter it into our contacts list. This time it's going to be a little less structured. Whereas when I did the RPA challenge.com video, I knew where I was going with it. There were some decisions that I needed to make along the way, but for the most part, I already knew that I could do it and I didn't have to make that many decisions. It was also fairly easy. In this case, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And I have also never automated this web page before. And you may be asking, well, why would you automate the user interface of an application like this? It looks relatively modern. Don't they have an API? 
we are pretending like is so very common in RPA is that you want to automate some application, the, the entering of data into an application, but they don't either have an API, they won't give you access to the API or um, some integration that you'd like to happen is just not possible or is really expensive. Now, I'm not here to sell you RPA. I'm just telling you that that's a very common use case. And I personally have witnessed that a ton of times. Let's go ahead and start automating this website. I'm going to create a new flow in Power Automate Desktop, and we'll call this Bitrix24. So let's go ahead and uh, create some subflows. I know that we're going to want to deal with launching this application, so let's do that. I'm going to create a subflow, and we'll just call this Launch. You'll see me fumble around a lot. I, this isn't Blue Prism. If there's a Blue Prism, I literally know the names of all of the actions in all of the VBOs. But in this case, I, I don't even know what half of them are called. I'm <laughs> not even half, uh, but I know that it's going to, oh, it's, it's launch. So launch, we're going to do Microsoft Edge. I'm going to choose new, launch new instance for one of them, then duplicate the action and choose attach to running instance. That way, what I can do is have it use one or the other based upon whether or not Microsoft Edge is open already on that web page. So let's choose launch new instance, right? Uh, initial URL needs to exist. So I'm actually going to end up naming it URL and I'm just going to type this here for now. And then I'll uh, probably go add an input variable and give it a default value. Uh, advanced. I want it to clear the cache. I think that will cause it to not be logged in potentially whenever it loads. I think that'd be good. Now it's giving me an error because I, URL doesn't exist. So let me create an input variable. So let's call this URL. And this is going to be of type text. I'm going to use the default value. So in this case, we're just simulating if it's being passed in. And so we'll just actually have it hard coded right here. Create. Okay, so that will exist as soon as we start the flow. A couple other things I need is the username and password that we'll end up using. So let me create an input variable for that username. And the reason I'm typing username in two spots is that one is the uh, name of it inside the flow, and the other one is sort of the parameter name whenever it's being called um, externally. Okay, so default value is going to be Dave the RPA guy dot com. Oh no no Dave the RPA guy at gmail dot com. That's the username. And uh, this is a real email address, but don't email me there because I won't get the email. I won't notice it. We want this to be of type text. That looks good. We want one more input. This is going to be sensitive text. We'll name this password. And password. And then the default value is going to be my password. All right, let's create that. And the password is masked because it's secure text. Now what I want to do is I want to set this up so that it launches a new Microsoft Edge when we need it to, but then it doesn't launch a new Microsoft Edge when it's already open on this web page. So let's duplicate this and change the launch mode to be attached to running instance. I'm going to change attached to Microsoft Edge tab to be by URL. For tab URL, I want to use the variable URL. And then it's going to still go into the same browser uh, variable for the instance. Save. Okay. Now, th in this case, it would do both things, right? It's going to launch a new Microsoft Edge, and then it would effectively attach to the same thing. And we don't want that. We want it to first try to attach. If it fails to attach, then it launches Microsoft Edge. If it doesn't fail, then we want it to skip over this and not do it. All right. So what we want is exit loop. No, no, no. We want exit subflow. I need to create a label first and then I'll show you label. Okay. So a label is not like a control on a web page. This label is like, it's like labeling a section um, or a point in the code that we can go to later. This feels very VB like because I think VB has a go to statement, <laughs> but whatever it's here. So we're going to use what's available in the tool and we're going to create a label and name this launch new can't put any spaces save this and um, now we can configure this action for when it has an error to go to this label and then it will try to launch a new microsoft edge let's open up this action and 
let's see, uh, on error, we want it to continue the flow and go to label, choose the label, launch new, save. Huh? Okay, so if this fails, then it should go to here, then it'll go to here, launch new Microsoft Edge, and then it'll exit the flow because we're at the end. If it succeeds here, meaning that the, the stage doesn't um, have a problem, it, finished, it thinks it finished properly, then it will go to the next action, which is exit the subflow, which effectively now we're out of the subflow, it will be back up the main page. So let's go to the main, uh, is this a flow? I guess main, the main flow and drag a reference to subflow, run subflow, choose the subflow, launch, save, uh, let's see, we've got this open already, right? If I run this, it should not open edge again. It should leave the same one open and we'll know that it did what it was supposed to if it's still on this page uh, because it would navigate to like the login page, I think, if it were to close edge and reopen it. So let's try. D did it finish? I think it finished. Okay, so I think it attached to the one that's open already. Um, Let's try to, let's close this and run it now and make sure that it launches edge. There we go. So you see it went down here. Cool. Okay. So it did log in though. That's not quite, this isn't quite what I wanted it to do. Uh, I didn't want it to stay logged in. Maybe what we'll do is come back and add a login later on. Once, um, once I've, I've ended up logging out at some point. Then we'll build some of the UI elements and actions to log into the application. But right now it looks like it's, it's keeping the cookies or whatever so that it, um, it stays logged in. That's fine. We are logged in now. Let's go back to main. Uh, the first thing I can see is that we obviously need to get to the contacts page. I'm just going to use a click. Let's see. We want to click a UI element. Oh, a link. Click on a link or any element of a web page. Let's try that one. UI element. Okay, right. We don't have any U UI elements yet. So let me just go ahead and add this one for contacts. Let's do the whole thing. I held control and left click for it to show up here. Okay. And then uh, let's save this. Now I'm going to go over to the UI elements and you'll see that it's created a group for me now under this web page. Uh, the <laughs> You know, so this is something that we're going to have to work through together because it's, it's confusing me what this actually is. I'm going to say something that might make me look really ignorant. Is this an X path? It looks like it to me. And if I, if I select these nodes, it looks like an X path, except with greater than symbols between each of the nodes, instead of having like, um, backslashes. Like I would expect, and, and that's what I'm used to in Blue Prism, having the, the backslashes between the nodes. If that's what it is, I, I, then I also don't understand this. Okay, so there's a space right here between this node and this node, and there's, 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 there's nothing there. What does that mean? <laughs> um, and I think it's, let's see, uh, div? Yeah, so it's this div and this table node. There's nothing between it. Does that mean that it's like a wild card? It's kind of like having two backslashes or something. I don't know what they want me to go for here. So I'm going to go with what just kind of makes most sense to me. I see that div says CRM control panel menu menu CRM contact in this div. And then there is a link element inside of it. That's the one we want to click. So I'm going to uncheck everything above that. And I want to know if, if this will work by itself. So let's update this. And we just want to click that link. So um, let me open this back up. I have no idea if this is going to work. Here we go. Oh, okay. It worked. <clears throat> I mean, I knew it was going to happen all along. So maybe I do understand this then. Because this, this is how I would expect an XPath expression to function. Uh, let's go back and look at it again. I want to rename it though. Uh, let's go with a menu link contacts. Once we're on contacts, we can click the add button, which is over to the right. Let's search for button. Let's see if that's a thing. Press button in window. This is under UI automation though, so that's not web automation. Press button on web page. What's the difference between press button and click link? Let's just use the link thing again because that worked for us last time. Okay, the UI element, right. We gotta, we gotta add a new UI element. Choose this. 
um, done, and then save. Let's go look at that UI element now. Wait, why did it create a second group? Maybe it's because of the URL. When the URL changes, it creates a separate group. And so maybe that actually makes sense. Let's edit the selectors of this. It's got the same ones selected. The bottom, oh, but I don't actually want it to stay like that, I don't think. UI button, primary UI button icon add, CRM button toolbar add. I mean, maybe that's fine. I guess we'll just leave it for now, but I kind of feel like that's not going to be reliable. Ooh, title. Hey, so I think what we can do is change this. Page title, toolbar, contact list. I don't know which one's more. Okay, ID is probably more reliable there. Title's reliable here. Uh, so technically, I bet that it would work even if I deselected this div. Uh, but I don't see any harm in leaving it. So to be consistent, I bet that's going to work. Okay, we have to test it though. Should always test, especially after you do something that you're like kind of confident will fail. Okay, let's click add. Oh, wait, no, we want it to navigate. Let's uh, let's go back to deals and it, so it should navigate to, it should click contacts and then click add. Here we go. Contacts, add. <clears throat> I'm a professional. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. We're on the new contact page and now I need to get data out of Excel. Probably could have done that before now, but uh, I didn't. So let's add that now. Let's add a subflow for Excel. Let's do get Excel data. We've done this before. Excel. Uh, oh, launch Excel. Okay. We want to launch and open the following document. It's C colon backslash test backslash CRM data dot XLSX. Make instance visible. Uh, sure. Open as read only. Yeah, I don't know. I guess so. It's, it's going to go into Excel instance. We want to close Excel. Let's do not save the document. What's wrong with this? Document path cannot be empty. Oh, when I clicked one of these, I don't know which one it was, but I, I clicked one of these and it, it, it removed the data from here. That's right. That's kind of a bug in this. I need to report that. Okay. C colon backslash test backslash CRM underscore data dot XLSX. Save. Uh, we need to get data. How did we do this? I tell you what, I've, I've, I've been playing with so many RPA tools lately that I forget how to do this in each one. Read from Excel worksheet. Is this the one where I need to determine where the, the last row is first? Let's do read from Excel worksheet. Okay, range of cells. Yeah, I need to get the end row. You know what, can I save this? Cool. I want to get, is there a get last? I, it's probably like right in front of me and I just don't see it. Oh, I fil I've filtered this. So maybe if I go down to the to Excel, open up la this, and then, and then it will be here. Oh, 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 here it is. It it's get first free row. <laughs> I was reading that as like get first three rows. I was like, I don't want that. Okay, um, let's do get first free row on column. Let's pretend like that didn't happen. First free row on column. Read from Excel worksheet. So here, the last row is going to use that variable. First free row on column. Start column is A. Start row is uh, either one or zero. Okay, end column is, um, oh, I don't know the end column. is. Can I do that automatically too? Oh, wait, what is this? Get first free column slash row of the active worksheet. What is this? Have I, have I done this before? First free column for, why does first free row exist then? <laughs> oh, because you can choose the column. Ah, oh, man, I could have used that before. Okay, 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 okay. All right, okay, okay, okay. Get first free column, first free row. Then in this one, I can use first free column. And this one, I can use first free row. Advanced, first line of range contains column names. Uh, that should be true. Save. The data will go into Excel data, which is right here. And that's our data. So remember, there's no inputs or outputs to subflows, unfortunately. So the data is just going to get pulled out and put into, uh, into this, this data table. And I'll be able to access that from anywhere in the flow, including the main page and other subflows. All right, let's, let's, uh, uh, did not mean to do that. I clicked run, did not mean to. Okay. Um, but it worked. And uh, we, 
Uh, do we have the data? Ooh, it did not get any data. Why did it not get any data? Oh, look, first free column. It says zero. Why would it return zero? Uh, wait, let's put a breakpoint. Some breakpoints in here. Run from here. Okay, and then let's step over this. It should launch Excel. We can clearly see that there's data here. <laughs> and then if I step over this, hey, what? It worked. What is going on? First free column, first free row. I don't understand. What? What's the problem? Close Excel. And the data's here. I don't, I don't understand. We definitely just ran that and it didn't work. Let's go back to the main page and let's run it from the very beginning and just see if uh, like somehow that that negatively impacts things. All right. It's uh, there's. Uh, can I can I click over here? OK, cool. So let's do this. Then click add. Oh, oh, I'm dumb. Yeah, I'm dumb. OK, so here's what what I did. <laughs> I don't have the subflow being called. So let's <laughs> let's add a subflow reference. To uh, do we want this to be up here? We probably want to get the Excel data first. Get Excel data. Well, it might maybe after launching the web page. So let's do that. Because if the web page, if the website's not working, then having the data is not going to help. Okay, now let's actually close this and run it from the beginning. It launches. Hopefully, it waits for everything to load. Ah, it's not looking promising. It did not. It did not navigate to here. Oh wait, no, no, we got to get the data first from Excel. Uh, undo these and hit play again. Got the data. It clicked. Oh man, isn't that exciting when it does what it's supposed to? Okay. Um. So let's make sure we got the data that we want. Um. Okay. I I think that I did something wrong. Nineteen. Oh, it's a zero index based in here. Why did it get a 20th row? Probably because, yeah. Okay, so when we did get Excel data, inside of uh, get free, first free row column, that's actually going to give us the first open, like empty cells. And so we don't want to include those. So we want to subtract one. Oh, right. So let me just make sure if I went to look at this, there should be an empty column too. Yep. Okay. So we actually want to subtract one from the column, the first free column that we get and subtract one from the first free row that we get. And now we can, uh, we can run this thing again. I'll leave it. I'll leave it open. I'm going to click over to companies. I think it'll still work. Let's see. I don't know. Contacts opens up this. It's oh, it's already gotten the Excel data, so we're good. Uh, let's make sure this worked. And there should be twenty. Right, it's going to say nineteen here because it's zero index based, so that's actually twenty rows. And then we have salutation all the way over to source, so that looks pretty good. Uh, then we need to spy some of these fields so that we can enter data into them. Boy, this is actually going to be a little easier than I thought it was going to be. I think. Uh, let's, let's do, do, we, so <clears throat> I don't really like the web recorder that much. Maybe in a different video, video, I can talk about that. Maybe they'll update it, but I found that it only gives you the absolute X path and that's uh, not good. So uh, maybe I'll come back to that. Uh, for now, we're going to manually do this, but just to point out, it, it is possible to do a web recorder and, and, and a lot of the elements will actually work afterward, but, um, web recorder is not really my thing. I, I, I it's just, it. It's not there yet. Uh, we need some AI built into that or something because it's 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 too dumb for it to work properly. So let's go to UI elements. So I'm going to click add UI element, and then over in this screen, let's hold. The, I'm going to hold Control and left click on each of these. It'll pop up here. Let me move this over a little bit more. Okay, so there's the element that I just clicked on. Let's do last name. I don't know why that says contact number. That's kind of weird. First name. There it is. 
Uh, let's, uh, I want to go look at these really quick and see how, how it's putting these in. It looks like it's, mm, oh, there's an iframe. Okay. Let, let's just go back over and finish these add UI element. We did one, two, three of them. So let's do second name. Is this creating a separate group? No, it's not. Okay. It combined those. Okay, cool. Add UI element again. Let's do date of birth. Position. What? Okay, there we go. So sometimes it looks like it, you can, I, I think what it did here is it used UI automation instead of web automation. Uh, and I think what I read somewhere, maybe somebody commented on the video, you can like hold control and like use your, your scroll on your mouse. Oh, look at that. Wait, is that right? Yeah, look at that. Okay. So, so I'm holding control and I'm scrolling on my mouse wheel and it lets you choose different things. I don't know how you use that to your advantage exactly, but it kind of, kind of help when it's hard to kind of mouse over it. So there you see, it says button. I don't know if that's, I think that's a UI thing. That's interesting. Okay. That's, that's very weird, but we got a uh, date of birth position. I'm very distracted now. Um, position, I think is what we got already. And then phone number. I'm just going to keep making sure that it goes under the web page group email. Did it add that phone number? Okay. And then, uh, we're going to skip down to address, go down to contact type. Okay. Also source. Okay. So it's actually calling it a control element. Uh, and then the last thing is the save button. And I think that's going to be it. So let's click done. Now that's created that all that stuff for us. I'm going to hit F2 each time to, um, to rename these. And I'm going to be looking at the screenshot, which that's actually pretty cool. Um, so maybe I didn't really need to name them cause it's got the screenshot, but salutation, uh, last name, first name, second name, date of birth, position, phone number, email, address, contact type, source, and then uh, button save. The rest of these, I'm just going to leave them as like the names of what they are rather than putting text or input or whatever, because I'm just going to assume their input unless otherwise stated like for this button. And then I don't think I need this, this group. It, it accidentally used uh, UIA mode. There's probably a way to force it to use that on purpose. I just don't know what it is yet. Microsoft's documentation of this stuff is like a little lacking right now. It'll probably get better over time. What's there is good, but there's just not enough of it. And what is this? All uh, oh, right, this is the add button. So let me name this button add. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now I think we can just configure populate. I think it's called populate. Populate. Populate text field on web page for form filling. Uh, wait, do we want to put this in a subflow? I'm going to put this here first and then maybe we'll move it into a subflow later. Okay. Browser UI element. Uh, right. Is this, wait, is this after we clicked add? This is after we clicked add and then we just start, want to start entering the data. So let's go with in order. What is this? So this is uh input text. Okay. We need to, we need to get data from Excel, right? Uh, we need to loop through our data. So let's do loop. Wait, let's go look at the loop group. I can't remember for each. Okay. What do we want to uh, iterate over? It's going to be Excel data. And then what we want is, mm, we'll call this a contact. We can name it the, sort of the output of each loop to be whatever we want. And, and when you loop over a data table, that's going to be a row, like an Excel row. I think it's called, um, uh, it's a data row. So we'll call that a contact. Put this inside of here. And we want to populate it. Uh, I can't remember how to reference this. 
but it's something like, I think we probably want these around the end. And then, um, yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm going to have to look this up. I can't remember. Uh, but it's something like contact and then the name of the field. What was the name of the field again? Okay, let's open this up. Okay, salutation. I feel like that's not right. Uh, we need to, I need to, I need to look this up. All right, so we are going to go to the Power Automate desktop documentation. Ugh, let's turn on dark mode. Okay. Um, also, can we talk about the, the Power Automate desktop? It doesn't have a dark mode? <laughs> Whoa. All right, that should have been the first item on the agenda. It, make a dark mode. Before it ever can even work properly, make a dark mode. So that I don't go blind while I'm trying to read this. Like, ah! Okay, <clears throat> anyway. So this is the Microsoft Power Automate desktop. Oh, I'm sorry. This is just Power Automate documentation. And then uh, somewhere on here is the word desktop. There we go. So I'll just click here. And that'll bring us to the documentation for Power Automate desktop. I'm going to scroll down. And uh, can I just search for data table? Mm. Manage desktop flows, desktop flow designer, and uh, variable data types. Let's see if there's a data table. Okay. Data table. Here we go. Oh, no, that's not it. Um, that's how you create a data table. How do you use it? Here we go. Um, so you just type the name of the variable. And then, oh, right, so you don't have to do a for, for each loop, but I'm probably gonna. This first one is what, the row number? Yeah, so the one is the row number, zero is a column number. In my case, I'd like to type the actual name. So let's go back over to here, open up populate text field. We'll remove the square brackets I put around the data row. So contact is the data row, and then I think it will work if I put square brackets with single quotes. Is that right? Uh, it only had column numbers, but I think this will work and we'll put single quotes for now. And that looks like it, uh, it looked like it looks like it worked. Maybe I should test this and put a break point here and we're going to run this and, t and have it. Yeah. I'm gonna have a break on this. Okay, it hasn't populated it yet, so let's populate. Uh, it looks like it's going to fail. Fail to write text in form field. Now, it might be because it's the salutation, so I might should skip that. So let's do disable. And then, um, so I guess that means it didn't fail to get the data out of Excel. So that might, we might be good there. Populate. I guess I could have just copied this. I did control C, control V just now. And let's configure this to use last name. And instead we'll use the last name field. Is that what it was called? There we go. Last name field in contact. Uh, okay, let's test this. All right, I'm going to run it. Hmm. Okay. It's failing to work with these. So that might mean that we just need to go through each of the UI elements and actually edit them so that it can find it properly. I'm going to assume that's what's happening. We'll let it run here until it fails. So let's go into the UI elements. And for each of these, I guess I got to do something with them. Edit selectors, edit selector. And then uh, let's expand this. see what we're working with here. Um, maybe we can get lucky and, and do this the same way as we did the, the other elements. I'm going to uncheck. So I'm a little concerned because it's an iframe and sometimes that can be problematic trying to get to things inside of it, but you know, maybe it'll work. So you might have to keep iframe selected or something. I don't know. Uh, here's, okay. So we're looking for this is salutation. So we're going to look for the word salutation in one of these. So let's just start at the bottom. 
work our way up and see if any of these extra attributes that are not selected right now have a value referencing salutation. It's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. That's fine. Uh, oof. Yeah, I, I feel like this is gonna be this is gonna be a little harder. Let's um let's go out of this and see if one of the other fields is easier. Um it doesn't <laughs> I guess we're they're all gonna be difficult. Oh here we go. No, last name. Boom. Okay. So that's a thing. Um, that means that this one shouldn't be as hard, though. Iframe. I don't. That, that ID does not look reliable. <laughs> let's try. Let's just try unchecking this entirely, and see if we can find an input that has an ID of last name text. Here we go, cross your fingers. Hmm, it's not working. It looks like it's just, uh, oh, it's paused. Does that mean it tried to write something? So if I step over this. Fail to write text in form field. Okay, here's we're gonna we're gonna try something different. We're we're, we're just gonna try to we're gonna try to click into that field. Let's disable. Well, uh, we want the we want the salutation field, and I'm going to disable this one. Let's move this up. Okay, so this is gonna try to click into the same field that this one was trying to to populate text into. And it, if it works, then that means that we can find the element properly. We're just, it, it's not working to try to populate text into it. And that's an important distinction. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay, uh, click link on web page failed. So it couldn't, it, it wasn't able to click into here, so it wasn't able to find it. Um, did I actually edit that though? Let me, let me change this one to use last name. And let's do the same thing again. Oh wait, uh, let's try. Okay, I just wanted to put a breakpoint right after this. So the first time it'll run through, it'll click and then it'll pause. Okay, so it's failing to find the items. I don't think I don't think it's finding it. And it might be the iframe. I'm trying to figure out what um what's going on with not being able to identify these fields. And I did notice that they're apparently inside of an iframe. I what I want to do is try to figure out the solution to that, but I want to record what I'm doing as I do that. The first thing I should try is Adjusting the last name to show that, to tell it that it's in an iframe. And this iframe, maybe I can use a different, let's try this. And let's, let's see if it can click into the last name field, I suppose. I want to know. Yeah. It should just not fail, right? If it fails, then we obviously have a problem. I don't think I need to... Oh, no, because I have to attach. We may as well run from the beginning. Okay, here we go.
Hey, it did it. It worked. Just including the iframe thing and changing it. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, I think I figured it out. All I did was I'm going into the UI elements to the last name element, and I'm going to go edit selectors and edit selector again. This is what I was trying to do with input and ID is just last name text. That seems like it should work, but I guess it being in an iframe makes it difficult. So first I thought, well, what if I just check this box? And I thought, well, you know, we did that already. We already tried that and that didn't work. What I did change though is, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this does not look reliable because uh, I assume that's a randomly generated ID that might literally change with each page load. I have no idea. So I unchecked this and instead I looked at some of the other attributes None of them look great, but this class up here says side panel iframe. But what I was hoping anyways, is I, I want to use this to identify the iframe and to just say like, Hey, this is an iframe. Here's how you can find it uh, and use this, but we're still calling an iframe over here. And then what you can see is it changed the selector to use the class attribute instead of the ID attribute, click update, close. Okay. And let me show you what I'm expecting it to do is I want it to go click add and then, um, you know, what I want it to do is click into this field because we're not typing into anything into it yet, but it should just click into that field. So let's close this and I'm going to run it again. And if it clicks into the field, then that means we have successfully gotten to the element and then we can move on. There we go. So it clicked into the last name field and hopefully that means we can use populate text field on web page and it will work now. So let's try that. I'm going to delete these. Uh, let's stop the, the flow. And let's delete this and this. We can, I think, let's go ahead and just re-enable this one. And uh, it should be using the same. Since I updated the UI element over here, it should automatically update what this is using. Let's save that. and. We're going to run it again. I, I'm going to see if it will work to loop through all of the rows from Excel and it should enter one name at a time. Let's see what happens. Oh, I have a, I have a break point. Let's try that again. Look at that. It's looping through each row of the spreadsheet and entering a different name each time. Oh, that's exciting. I love that it colors the field yellow too. Completely unnecessary, but that's cool. And this is 20 rows of data, so it just finished. Okay, cool. Next, I should configure all of the other UI elements to use that iframe. So I'm going to go into each of these and change them to use the class instead of the ID. Uh, wow, there's a lot selected there. What is going on? All right, this is the salutation one that we may have a different problem with. Um, let's come back to this. I will, I will, um, we'll try to solve this one later. Let's do all the rest that should be kind of similar. Change to class, uncheck ID, and you'll see it says iframe, and then the class, input ID, name, text. Wait a minute, name text. Oh, name, I guess is la first name. Yeah. Then uh, second name. Edit selector. Let's change to use class. And that looks good. Date of birth, edit the selectors. Wait, is this one different too? This one's different too. Oh, that's not good. Okay, well, we know we want to choose this. We don't know what we want to do with the rest of this down here though. Oh no, this one's good. We can just uncheck all these, I think. <laughs> I, don't know, I guess we'll find out. Okay, input text. That looks reliable to me. I don't think we need... I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to leave that. It's probably always going to be UI control element and uh, name is birth date. That looks good. Position. 
change from ID to use class, iframe class input post text, position, position. P-O-S-T as an abbreviation for position, it's kind of weird. Edit selector, let's change the iframe to use the class instead of ID. Oh, we got a bunch of things to uncheck. Awesome. Uncheck, 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 check. And iframe class, and then we got, now this one does not look the same. So we may have to figure this one out too. Oh, here we go. Wait. CRM entity widget content input CRM entity widget content phone. Content input phone. <laughs> I I don't know about this. I I I think it's probably going to be fine, but that makes me nervous for the class to be that long because if any if any of this changes, it breaks. Uh, so I don't like that too much, but we're going to leave it for now because it's probably going to work. Goodness gracious. Okay. So I, I think that there's probably ways for this to have been faster. But, you know, I don't know everything. Class ID. Uncheck all of these uh, is this one gonna work email what is this oh email no value <laughs> uh i guess i'll just leave it i mean whatever I, I don't know if that needs to stay there or not uh we'll leave it whatever we'll see what happens Edit selectors. Let's. Okay. Change the iframe to use class instead of ID. Uncheck, 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 uncheck. Uncheck, uncheck. Oh my goodness gracious. Text box. What is this for? This is for address. There's nothing here that says address, though. Uh, this one does, though. We can include this. And then... Um, that should work. So it's an input of type text that's beneath a division div that has a class of CRM address search control block which is underneath an iframe that has class of side panel iframe. Contact type. Change to the class. Um, what is this one? This was, I already, I said this out loud, contact type. So we're looking for, hmm. Okay, this one might be difficult too. We might have to go look at the HTML of this one. Okay, we'll probably have to come back to that one. Let's go to source. This one's probably gonna have the same issue that one did. Yep, this is going to have the same issue. Okay, so we'll come back to this one. And let's make sure that the save button will work. Got to change the iframe. And... Seems like this should be easy. Yeah. I mean... Type submit, control enter... Uh, uh, wait, what? Okay, this is the iframe, right? Yeah. 
So let's um let's uncheck these and it's going to be a button that has a type of submit. I don't know if there's going to be any others like that, but I bet there's no other ones that have a title of control enter. I'm going to leave all three of these selected because I want it to fail if any of them are not correct. Err on the side of caution. Okay, now let's save this uh, and let's go ahead and fill out the form with as many uh, as, as these as we think will work, which um, pretty much is all of them except for salutation, source, button, I'm sorry, salutation, contact type, source, and like one of these others, like date of birth or something. Also didn't look like it would work properly. So I'm going to duplicate this populate text field and it that one does last name. So let's make this one do first name and change this to be first name. Let's duplicate that. Change this one to be uh, second name. Duplicate. This one will be date of birth, um, which I may end up disabling because I think that's the one one of them that didn't work properly. Date of birth. Is that what it was? How it's spelled here? Date of birth. Yep. And then position, phone number, email, address, contact type, source. Those are all easy. And then position, position, save. Phone number, phone number, save. Email, email. Address, address, contact type, contact type, and then source, source. All right, let's toss in a submit uh we want to do we click let's just do click on link on web page i'll go ahead and, and 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 build this in but i think i might disable it oh wait wait for page to load yeah that might that might work uh but that does mean that we need actually that this click click link on web page add this needs to be here for every single one of them. So it should be inside the for each loop, I mean. All right, uh, I don't know, I can't remember which of these work. So let's just take a gander at them again. Uh, yep, that's one of them. So we've got this one disabled. Last name should work and first name, second name. Date of birth was, oh, date of birth is one that should work. Well, which one was it? Position? Phone number. Nope, phone number should technically work. That looked really weird, but uh, email. Yeah, email might work. That's also kind of weird. We'll have to see. Address. Uh, I'm not 100% confident about address, but we'll we'll try it. Contact type and source. Well, I thought there were, yeah, there's three. So salutation, contact type, and source. We're going to disable. Disable this. Disable this. 
and then we'll see if it can um uh we'll go ahead and disable the save button as well and then it, it should just do it should just fill out the fields over and over which means we're only going to add once i'll end up putting this back in so we should add and then loop through all the data filling out the fields and and never actually navigating away uh oh the changes have we saved do you want to change, close the editor hmm so i need to handle that little pop up okay see how this does surely something's going to fail All right, so it's got the form open. Last name, first name, second name, date of birth, position, phone number, email, address. Let's make sure, is it doing every one that it should? Wow. Okay. It's working pretty well. So I'm going to let this keep running, but I may uh, cut past a lot of this running if they if it all kind of does the same thing. All right, so I'll probably skip to the end of that rather than playing all 20 rows of that. Uh, but every single one of them worked. That's great. Now we just need to deal with some of those fields that seem kind of problematic. So salutation being the the first one. So let's try to deal with that uh, in the UI elements. Let's go to salutation. First, I just want to take a look at what's here. Okay, so, uh, you know, this being UI control element seems fine. We just need something right above this that would indicate this is salutation. And I, I you know, I think I've already looked through this, but. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be here. All right, so what we've got to do, I think, is we're going to have to look at the... We're going to have to look at the HTML of this page. Let's try F12. All right, and hit uh, select an element to inspect it. And then let's click on salutation. This may be difficult. <sighs> One thing we can go with is that it is the first it is the first drop down on the page. And it says control uh, like W100 or whatever. Let's go back and see if it showed that. Yeah, so this W100 could uniquely identify that control. So I'm going to uncheck these and um, we're leaving the iframe selected with class. We are select, we're going to deselect this too. Okay. We're going to keep um, basically the iframe level, then the parent element that contains the UI control element. And, and we're keeping the actual element itself too. Let's update that. And then let's go ahead and test this one. We'll re-enable. So you can see that this is using, uh, the, the, so populating the text field salutation, which we just edited. And it's gonna take the salutation field from the Excel spreadsheet and populate it in there. Uh, let's close this and we'll click away manually. We probably need to handle that later, but you know, demo and whatnot. Uh, okay, I'm gonna click run um i probably don't want this to run all the way through so i'm gonna hit i'll just a break point here and if it can manage to select the first one properly then that's going to be good enough hey it worked okay um then we maybe we can use that same concept on the other elements Let's go look at those. In our UI elements, let's go to contact type, edit selector, and then we'll try to do the same thing. It looks like the parent element has like a... Now, let me point out, this. it could change. It works right now. Oh, no. It says W100 as well. 
<laughs> what? Oh man. Um, is it exactly the same thing? <laughs> this is our contact type, and then we want to see what the salutation is. Those are exactly the same. You know what? Let's find this. Let's find this this element. Uh, F12. Hit this. Let's click here. And let's see how close that is. Here's the label. So what we could do is um, we could find... We would need to find... <laughs> Effectively, we need to find the, the, this, uh, where'd the label go? We need to find this label and then navigate upward one or two elements. It looks like two elements. We have to go up two nodes and then down into an input that has this class <laughs> where the div has this class. That's like W100. Wow. All right. I'm going to try to figure that out. I want to try something. I think this will work. So I want to record that attempt. Here's what I think. This works, right? We, we already tested trying to fill in the salutation uh, combo box. That worked. But now we need to also do that for contact type and source. And those are both, uh, are those both, those are both combo boxes. So it seems like we're having problems with the combo boxes specifically. Uh, okay. Okay. You know, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I could include ordinal, which I guess in Blue Prism it'd be called match index. And uh, here I, I, I'm assuming, anyways, that's this is the same thing. Ordinal would be like if there's like a series of the of elements that match this selector, then um, then go to the you know nth one, so the first, second, third, whatever. It's set to negative one, which I guess it means like don't use this. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna choose one, which I think. If it's zero based, then zero would go to the first one, one would go to the second one. And in this case, I want to go to the second combo box on the page. So I'm going to do this and then uh, check this box. You'll see it puts an EQ. Does that stand for like, that probably stands for something. EQ. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I think that means uh, like the nth, um, you know, the, the first or I guess the second one that, that shows up. And let's, <laughs> let's try, let's see, let's just see if that works. Okay, we want to do contact type. So let's enable contact type. We just fixed it. Okay. Now that's interesting. It just let me click away from there, even though we had entered the, the a value into the salutation field. So that makes me concerned that we didn't actually do that. So let me click add and manually select misses then try to click mm, that means it wasn't actually working we're probably going to have to have it click this and then click the value that it that below mm, that's unfortunate yep yep that's unfortunate okay well that's okay we'll leave that for a second and then let's just continue with what with with what, what we're testing i want to know if we can get it to put the contact type into the field let's just put like a break point here it should it'll get to here break and then I'll hit run again. It'll 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 do the rest of these fields, and then it'll get to here and run it, and then it'll go back up and pause. Oh right, I gotta hit this. Okay, so see it put misses, but I don't think the form actually accepted that. Okay, now did it? Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, the first one is clients, which this is already set to. So I have no idea. It, it, by default, it's set to clients. So I need to go to the second row where it should change it to suppliers. It changed to suppliers, um, but I think if I hit save now, it's it's not going to be there. 
See, contact type is clients. And uh, if I go into uh, edit this, yeah, it says salutations not selected. So it did not accept that. Um, let's, let's delete Gwendolyn. What's her face? How do we delete? How do we delete? <laughs> There's a button that says delete. Okay. Uh, let's go back over here. We're going to have to change that. So what do we got to do differently? Well, we may just have it, we may just have it click this and then, and then click one of the elements. That's probably the easiest way for us to handle it. Stop this. Um, do we want to click a UI element, a link? We could just do the click link because, you know, that's been treating us well so far. We're going to have it click the salutation uh, link. Then um, wait for page to load, I guess so. Then after that happens, we need another element. So let's add a UI element. Let's click here. Oh, right. It's got a match. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do dynamic elements. Let's just spy this. We'll rename it. Um, I could spy all four, like all the elements separately <laughs> and then have like a, like a choice. So if it's Mr, then select Mr. If it's Mrs, select Mrs. But I'd rather have it select the text or ha have it select the option based upon what exactly the text is and just pass that value in dynamically. Um, that's gotta be a thing, but I, I don't think I've ever done that before. This is the salutation. Uh, um, value. I don't know. Let's move this up here. And then, um, we want it to click again, but this time it's going to be salutation value. Hmm. So there must be a way, there must be a way to make that dynamic. Edit select. Oh, no, that's not the one I want. This one. Why is all this stuff selected? I didn't think I included all that stuff. Oh, because I, I spied that again. Right. Uh, let's change this to class. Let's, um, let's, what was it that I discovered? Oh, wait, this is menu pop-up text. Oh, here we go. This is probably where you change to... Like a, uh, like you put a variable here or something. Hmm. Menu pop up. No icon. None of these, none of these have what I want. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just keep all these selected for now. And then, um, psh so I have to, I, I'm actually going to have to make a custom one after I look at the web page. So we got to look at the web page here and, uh, do F12. We're going to have to click one of these. Here we go. So I, 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 I think that what we can do is uh, go into edit. So let's change to custom. And then um, if I go back over to this, this is an element type of span and the inner text is Mr. So I think that we can just, maybe you can use, oh, look, can you do variables here? Look at that. You can do variables here. Okay. I think that I just need to change this to say text. I don't know that this is going to work. I have a feeling this isn't going to work. And then I want to put the uh, um, uh, a variable, which I haven't set yet. Wait, no, it, uh, this is the, this is the value that we want to select. So it should actually be contact. And this is a contact type, right? Yeah, this is contact type. 
like that. There's there's no way that's going to work, right? Uh, where were you? No, no, no. This is, ah, it's salutation, not, not contact type. We're on salutation. Salutation. So it should, yeah, it should get whatever values from salutation. It should find that and choose it. Salutation. Sick. Let me fix that. All right, let's go into salutation value, that UI element, and change this to say salutation instead of salutation. Hey, I don't know if this is too small for you to see, but this is just the same thing we used to get the data out of each of the fields um, in, in the other populate text field um, actions. Click link on web page failed. All right. Why did it fail? The question is, uh, did, did I do an incorrect, did I do an incorrect, uh, selector? Let's test something. Let's just go like, let's just put some crazy stuff in here and see if it allows that. If it does, then it means, it means that, uh, we really can't trust it. <laughs> to say that it just didn't work to click on it because it might be like it might be a selector that will just literally never work yeah it, it's just going to tell us the same error okay so i i clearly got something wrong it, it's not possible to do that then uh or or, or the the value i'm putting here is not uh is not possible you can't put like so how do you get the inner text and how do you point to it in this? I could just try, try with like, like text. Let's try text. I'm just, I'm just trying random things at this point. Colon. See, what is this colon EQ thing? What syntax is that from? I got to look this up. Okay. So here's the thing. Ah, uh, man, I feel really silly. Um, I, I could not figure out what the syntax was for, for this stuff in, in, uh, in power automate. Like I couldn't figure out what this stuff was until it occurred to me when I saw this EQ and I thought, what is EQ? I was like, that seems really familiar. Like I, now granted I've only done this a little bit. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal that I didn't know immediately, but, uh, <clears throat> it's just, I'm pretty sure it's just straight up jQuery syntax. I mean, it doesn't include like the dollar sign and, uh, like the parentheses, but I'm, I'm guessing that all of this stuff, uh, you know, the, like this or this, like this would all work in power automate. It's just, <laughs> it's just jQuery. <laughs> All this time, I could have been looking that up as a reference. Um, and there's probably, and it, I'm sure there's, you know, tons and tons of tutorials about jQuery and I've only used it a little bit. So it just didn't occur to me. Um, but when I saw this, that's when it really sealed it for me. I'm assuming, uh, right. Because there's that greater than symbol that, that indicates like, um, so here's div and then it's saying all, uh, paragraph elements that are a direct child of the div element. So this does mean like this element goes directly to this element. And then there's the, my question from earlier, when it's, when there's nothing between them, it's saying, um, any paragraph element, or I guess all paragraph elements that are descendants or beneath this node, that's the di division or the div. <laughs> well, um, I, 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 that this really opens up a world of possibilities, maybe uh, excessively so in Power Automate. So, um, oh, wow. <clears throat> you know, this just makes me wonder, has, has this entire video been pointless? Uh, I'm still going to post it. All right. You're going to see this 
And you and you're gonna think like, Dave, why did you waste my time with all that stuff? I'm sorry. <sighs> wow. Okay. Mm. I should have known this. I feel really silly. All right. Well, you know, uh, we we just. Gosh, do we give up now? I don't even know. Uh, so I don't know what all capability there is in jQuery. What I'm probably going to do is look for salutation. And then if jQuery lets you navigate upward a couple of elements and then look for a control, like a combo box control that's beneath the element that it goes up to, and then it'll find this and it'll work. Let's try that. I'm going to add a UI element and we're going to spy, uh, we're going to spy, uh, this and this. Okay. Then we're going to sort of combine the two. Uh, didn't I spy two things? There we go. Uh, okay. Let's. Let's go, let's call this label salutation. Sal, I can't spell this word right. Sal, sal, salutation. And then uh, let's rename this. Oh, this is salutation value. Salutation value two. And then what I think I want to do is adjust. Mm, do I want to? copy something out of here we definitely need the iframe thing still maybe and then um what i'm looking for uh, what i'm looking for is the label that indicates that's salutation okay so i just need to click through here hopefully one of these um, says that it, it does not. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's fine. I didn't want this to be easy. <laughs> Gosh. Where's the label? Okay. Here's a, okay. It's a, it's a label. So I can actually just type this manually. Hmm. So let's go down to this. We're going to go custom and uh, I do want to keep these maybe, uh, maybe I can just use that last one, div class UI control element, potentially I'm gonna delete everything. Oh, I got to fix that. Edit. We need to change this to use the class instead of the ID. And then I can change to custom delete everything up to here. <laughs> um, and then I think what I want is label open, close square brackets. And then, um, Oh, right. I, I don't know how in jQuery to reference like the inner text of something. So I need to know that selector inner tech inner text we need to get the value of the inner text contains oh <laughs> um contains selector so let's look for contains here it is so we can just use colon contains and then the value that we're looking for i want it to be equal to that though maybe we'll go with contains for now the label should contain i guess that works but we don't want it to be hello it needs to say salutation and then uh and then i want a tilde it should find a div that's after this in the html then find a div that's beneath that. Oh man. Uh, I need to rename this. This is actually the, the combo box itself.
We'll just go combo like that and put that up here. And uh, what, what I just want it to do is click on CBO combo salutation. What, maybe I was supposed to do this. Uh, let's. Maybe it's supposed to be label contains like that. All right, let's try this. Hey, I think it clicked it. Is it highlighted it? Okay, we might be we might be onto something now. I I don't know how much time I've been spending on this. Um it's uh it's midnight now and I'm I'm tired. Uh but I wanted to point out I figured some stuff out. I did reading on um jQuery and and <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what I did differently. I mean, I know what I did, but like, I don't know what series of steps I took. So instead of showing you each step, I'm just going to show you what I have at the end. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay. So here, here's the, here's the selector I have and this works and it will probably end up using this for the first click at least. So let me point out what we're going for. Uh, when we're in this screen and we want to, um, we want to specifically be choosing the salutation drop down. There's no way to uniquely identify this combo box by itself, so we kind of need to anchor it to something. So what I what I did is um I made I made a jQuery selector that looks for a div element that contains both a label of salutation and then it goes and selects a child element from inside of that div that matches the con this control type. Uh, this class UI CTL element. So here's the iframe, like we always have. Then inside that, it looks for <laughs> a div that has a label that contains the word salutation. And it's hard to see, maybe, but this is still attached to that, right? So, like this whole thing, uh, this class equals this long um, stuff, that is part of identifying this div. So it both has to have a label. It says salutation and it has to match this, this class. Then once it's found that, it then looks in below that. So all the elements beneath that find one where it's a div and it has a class of UI CTL element. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> boy, you know, these, these low code, no code tools are just easy to use and that works. I'll, I'll show you. Um, this may not seem like it's a big deal. Uh, that this works, but it is a big deal because I can use what I've just learned to choose one of the one of the elements inside this combo box. Okay, so there you go. It clicked this, and so now these these um choices appear. So now I should be able to. You know, it just occurred to me. I probably didn't. I probably don't have to click here. I might be able to use. Let's uh let's disable this for a second. Oh, let me stop this. Let's disable this. And let's use a populate text field. Uh is this what I want? Click on web page. Okay, I might end up needing that, but for now I'm going to disable that too. Uh put a breakpoint here. Okay. So what I'm, what it should do, I need to change it to use this, the combo salutation this is the one I've been working on. It should put the value into that field. And something that just occurred to me, I should try is, um, is change this emulate typing. So that's interesting. Actually, I thought I was going to turn this on and, and that that would, um, that would then work. I kind of want to test this. I need to test it all the way through, but I want it to fill out one whole thing. Uh, okay, let's test this.
This should stop. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click save, and now I just want to go in and see if it says misses or not. Nope, not selected. Okay, so that didn't work. I just wanted to test that and make sure. Okay, so that that's not gonna be a thing. Uh, we won't be able to populate the text field. That's fine. So we'll go back to what I was originally planning to do. Is first we'll we'll click into the combo box so that it shows, and then. And uh, so now I need the click link on web page and I need to, to click specifically salutation value. Let's go to the UI elements. I'm going to rename this to combo box and salutation value. And I'm going to do something similar to what I did in this one with a, a somewhat complex selector. Let me just go steal that. From over here, this it's not going to be labeled though. I need I think I need to go look at it over here, and we need F twelve. I think I want to select maybe I'll just select any of them, and it's okay. So it's going to be a span is the type of the element that contains the value that we're looking for. And it will be underneath. So let's go to custom. So I know that at the very bottom I want, so I think I want span has label and I believe I can just delete most of this stuff. See class menu pop up. I don't think I need this. So it should look for so iframe and then inside that find a div that has a class of menu pop up. Inside that find a span where it has oh it's not a label. Oh it is a span that contains this. So I think I don't need has. Uh, so span contains salute, uh, span contains, we'll just first do Mr. to make sure that that works. And I think I can just delete this one. So it's just that left. And this was CBO salutation value. Let's enable this. I've already selected it. I'm okay. I feel like this will work, but I have been wrong before and multiple times tonight. Ooh, that worked. Okay. Now, if I just let this continue, oh, it's going to reselect it, but that's okay. Okay. Um, now let me save. What is this? Possible clones. I don't care. Uh, oh, look at that. It's saved. It's saved. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, let's delete this stuff. Otherwise, it's going to keep telling me that there's a clone. I'll tell you what, this is going to uh, definitely be done in a couple of sessions. I, I I can't stay awake any longer. I just I want this to work, and then I'm going to go to sleep, and then we'll do this tomorrow night. Okay, so I think here I just want to... I think this is where I can go copy the the value I have in here. Yeah. Salutation value. Like that. Is this the salutation? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that works. Now, I'm probably just going to let it run. And it'll, uh, will it keep? Will that work properly? I think it'll work. Oh, didn't mean to click save again. Uh, all right, here we go. Hmm. 
Mrs. Is that what the first line is? I don't know. I can't see it. Oh, wait. Can I click away? I think I can click away and it, it'll, be, it'll work in the background. Mr. So I should be able to do the same thing with the contact type and the source. Literally the same thing. So I'll have it look for, you know, verify where the label is, find the, el the element that contains that label and the combo box, select the combo box by clicking on it, and then click the, the thing below. Um, boy, I'm tired, but I kind of want to finish this. What are we on? Rollin? Nova Park. All right, let's go ahead and stop it there. I, I think that we have success with this. Let's, um, just because I can't stop myself, let me go ahead and try to fix the, um, the other elements. These one, uh, not this one. Let's delete this. Delete that. We want the contact type. This will be, uh, we need to go look at that. So like it says contact type, it's a lowercase t. I don't know if that matters. Change to custom. And then uh, we do not need all of this stuff. Oh, wait, I could have just copied it from earlier, but let me see if I can remember it. It was, uh, I, I feel like it was um div it's like div has label contains in this case it's what was it contact type oh this is getting confusing and then inside that a div that has a, a class of ui control element now let me just let me go over and verify how I did this before. Uh, what? This is not the right one. We want this one. All right. So, yeah, I don't know that I really needed this. I think I probably overcomplicated it by adding this part. It definitely helps verify for sure, but I don't think I needed it. So I think we just need the div has label contains, and I think I have that over there and then this. So it should just work like it is. Then um, let's go ahead and fix source. Custom, uh, we want this to be div has um, label, contains and it's going to be a source with a capital s and then find a ui ctl element underneath that so i think i can enable this oh no no these are these don't work anymore or these don't work at all i guess and then, uh, let's see, populate text field, CBO. Oh, this isn't, this isn't, we don't want this. Yeah, because that, this chooses for us. We don't want that. Um, populate text field on web page. This is address. Okay, so we need to copy the clicks that we did up here for salutation and paste them. Down here, change this to instead use contact type. Oh, I just realized I didn't uh, I didn't create a secondary element. I'll have to create a secondary element for each of the other ones. So I don't think we need label anymore or salutation. Uh, but I will need this again. Okay, the first one is going to click source. Okay, so to click 
con contact type, and then it'll click the value for contact type, which I got to fix that. Click source, and then click the uh, value for source. So let's rename this to CBO source for combo box. Rename this to combo box. And then we need to steal this. I wonder if it'll just work if I just put that the the value. Uh, oh, I think I need another element though. Yeah, I need another element. So let's just go ahead and spy it. I guess we'll select this one for now. And then also, I guess I should point out I am I'm holding control. Wait, can I? Yeah, I'm holding control and scrolling my mouse wheel so that it'll select different elements. I'm going to go with the div here. And yeah, that's two menu boxes or menu pop up items. This is for source. Uh, menu pop up. So I think the exact same thing will work. Let me go copy that from over here for value. Oh wait, this says menu pop up. I think it still works. Change to custom. Yeah, menu pop up. So I'm just gonna paste this and change salutation to be contact uh, contact type, so it gets the right column. That should work. And then this one will do the same thing, except this is for source. We'll change that. So this clicks on combo box contact type. I need to rename these. This one is CBO contact type value. This one is CBO source value. We'll just move these. And now I need to click the contact type combo box, click the contact type value in the combo box, click the source combo box, then click the value that's in the source combo box. Woo, man. And let's go ahead and try enabling clicking the save button. I don't know if I need to change this one or not. Let's, let's go to the save button. Look at the selectors here. Oh, right. Hmm. I guess that should probably still work. Wait, why does it say title empty? Oh, title equals control enter. I see. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Here we go. Mrs. Bosworth. First name Benny. Cause so here's where it should click. Oh, wait a minute. What are we? What's happening? It didn't click the value and contact type, but it didn't. I mean, it didn't even open the value. Let's just run it again. And maybe what we can change is when it does the address, I did notice some weird stuff going on here. Unfocus text box after filling it. Let's try that. See if that helps anything. Close. It might, it might just be that I got something wrong. I don't feel like I did.
yeah, it's just not opening. I feel like it's not clicking the contact type. So take a look at what's going on with contact type combo box. So it should find a label that contains contact type. Inside the iframe, find a label that says contact type, and then find a div that contains the label contact type. You know, the I did there there is there is something I did different there. Um let's go copy from here this class, which I, I assume is gonna be the same for all of them. But I'm not 100% sure. Let's paste this in because maybe that did matter. <laughs> maybe past me is smarter than current me. Uh, okay, so we gave that extra identifier for the selector. Now we'll try this again from the beginning because I don't know how to run from the middle. I mean, I'm sure I guess for testing, I could, I could set it up that way. Yeah. Cause I don't think it was even clicking the box, the combo box to begin with. Okay. It clicked. It definitely clicked at that time. Okay. Was it supposed to put clients? It was, right? It was supposed to put clients. Yeah, so I mean, it, it put the right value in there. Um, it's having a hard time clicking the save button. That's okay, because we've learned all about jQuery now. And let's see if we can't make that better. I'm going to go look at the HTML over here at the save. Oh, here, the save button. Wow, uh, I want it to show me the, mm, I guess that's the button. Uh, title, control, enter. I mean, it seems like it should work with just that. So, Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like it should work just like this, technically. Let's just test that, see how it does. Oh, okay. So we don't actually know what happens after you, after you create a client. Okay. 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 Now what we need to do, uh, first is delete this. Then let's, uh, bring these links in to the loop. I probably don't need it to navigate back to contacts again. I guess I could just have it do that. I'll have it do that for now. No, 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 no. That's silly. Why make it go slower for no reason? All right. So now it should click add again and we'll see how that does. Um, 
maybe I need to have it. Maybe I do need to have it navigate back to contacts first. All right, so first, so I might end up having it click this close button, but first I think I may have it uh, delete. I may have it uh, just cl navigate back to contacts again, and and that might that might do it. Uh, let's try run this again. Okay, navigates contacts. I feel like this one's gonna work. Navigate to contacts. Looks like it's working. All right. Well, now, now we could just go get a cup of coffee, sip on that coffee, you know, maybe check the news or the weather while, while this is doing our work for us. We definitely have a few more things we got to add in this before it would be worth running for ourselves in production. All right, that's it. I, I, I have to think about this and see if I want to add anything to this automation. One thing I need to add is logging into the web application. So in order to get to that, I also need it to bring me to the login screen whenever we try to open the app. And right now, it, because of cookies, it's remembering my login. And so I don't actually have to log in. And because of that, it's unpredictable when it's going to bring up the login screen. For now, I think I'd just like it to log in every time I open Edge, and obviously it doesn't log in if Edge is already open. So in the case where it, it opens a new instance of Edge, I'm going to go to the advanced section of this and change this setting clear cookies to true, and that way it should... I think that's what I was going for with clearing the cache, but I think I need to do clear the cookies. So let's try that. I'm going to save, and I'm going to rerun this so that it goes to the login page. Let's put a breakpoint right here, and then we'll step over it when we get to that. All right, let's step. And it launched. Let's see if it goes to the... Cool. So it cleared the cookies, and it went to the login page, and that's perfect. Now what I need to do is add a few more UI elements, one for entering an email, and then probably one for next, one for the password, and then whatever button it is to log in. So let's go to our workflow and over to the UI elements, and I'm going to add a UI element. Let's use this one and this one. Then I'll go ahead and put in my email manually. Whoops. Again, don't email me there because I don't check that email. And then we'll log in. And on here, I'm going to spy this element too. And uh, I guess we'll just leave them remember me because it doesn't really matter. And then this next button, which that might be the same button as before. So maybe I could reuse that. Okay, and then let's click done. All right, so now we've got our new elements. Let me, let's see, let's rename this. Can I rename this? Uh, login screen. And we'll rename this contacts. I guess I should call this contacts screen. All right, here we want um, username. Username, I don't know. Actually, it's probably going to be the same. Let's see if the definitions of these are the, the exact same thing. In edit selector, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, it just says UI button, submit. Hmm. I think we might have to go look at the page. 
So let's uh, let's click. Can I click back into your password? Mm. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to hit F12 and click this, then click the button. Uh, the button data action is submit. That actually seems reasonable because I, I, I doubt there's any others that have a, any other uh, buttons that have a data action of submit. And then if I need to, I could include one of these divs above something like B24 network auth form field block. Okay, so what we'll do is include just that node for kind of like an anchor point. And then inside it'll be a button that has, it looks like data components, not a th or data, data action submit. So we could just use type submit. And I think that might work, but I'm going to change this to custom. And instead of using class and type we'll just do data component equals submit oh, i'm sorry data action submit and let's see if that works update it okay so that was for the next button so let's rename this button next and I think that probably will work for this one as well when we're doing the next button after inputting the password. Yeah, it's the same thing. So I'm going to delete this element and then we'll just reuse the other one. Change this to password. Uh, input ID is password. That looks like that'll probably work. And let's just move this up. Username, password, button, next. And then what we want to do, let's, let's uh, minimize this. Okay, we're going to launch, and then we're getting data from Excel. So probably in the launch, we could log in. Yeah, so if it launches uh, Edge, then we'll log in. If it's attaching to Edge, then it won't log in, because we'll assume that it's already logged in. So let's add a populate text field and then choose, wait, what? Populate text. Oh, this is not the right one. We want the web automation one. Use the browser instance, scroll down. Let's use username. And then the username that we'll put in is going to be from a variable that I created, which is probably called username. Yep. And then let's copy and paste this. Now let's change it to password. And here, instead of just inputting text variable or expression, we're going to use direct sensitive text input. Wait, oh, you, you, what? Why would you not be able to use a, a, a variable right here? That makes no sense. Why would you ever type the sensitive text directly in here? <laughs> Okay, Microsoft, that makes no sense. Uh, so we're going to switch back to input as text, variable, or expression, and we're going to use password here. And we'll hope that the password stays masked. Save. Um, okay. And then after we do that, we want to, oh, we got to actually click next in between each of these. So let's use click link on web page and use the next button copy this and paste it drag the duplicate down here so it should um, fill in the username click next fill in the password and then click next and after that we should be logged in basically so let's make sure that this is waiting for the page to load actually does it click it before or after i guess it probably it probably waits for the page to load before clicking and then what happens after launch it gets excel data so it'll probably have time to load. And then the first time we do something inside this loop, does this wait for the page to load? Yes, it does. Okay, so we should be good there. All right, let's close this and see if it will log in. Let's put a breakpoint. Oh, we've got a breakpoint. Let's keep it going.
All right, put in the username, click next, put in the password, click next. Wow, that worked pretty easily. What is this? Oh, it's a new pop-up. Uh, that's unfortunate. I wonder if that will interfere with anything. It, it, it would have. Okay, well, maybe that's something we deal with, but whatever. The other thing we need to do is click close or log out. I guess we could log out or we could just close. We could just close edge and call it good. So let's try that. Let's go to the web automation area and see if there's a close web browser. Where did it go? I went like this and clicked save. What? Oh, wow. It put it inside the for each. <laughs> okay. That's weird. Microsoft, please. That's just silly. Okay, now let's um, let's simulate as if it goes through all of this, and we're just gonna disable this whole for each loop. What? No statement found to match the end statement. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you can't just disable that whole section. All right, fine, fine. That's fine. What we'll do is put a breakpoint here, move the closed web browser up, and then we'll just run the sort of first part of the flow to make sure it works properly. So it should launch, log in, get data from Excel, and then close the browser. And then we'll run it one more time after that to make sure that uh, this kind of thing can be run in succession. And let's hit stop, run it again. All right. I think we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and take the breakpoint out, minimize this for each loop, and drag this web browser down to below the for each loop. Microsoft, do there. All right, all right, all right. Let's try this. I'm going to undo and I'm going to drag the for each loop up. And it expands it. What? Okay. Goodness gracious. Okay. So launch and log in. Get the data from Excel, fill in all the data, adding all the contacts, and then close the web browser at the end. Well, we made it. We made it through automating this web page for the first time. I did not, I, I barely prepared for this. I apologize if anything was confusing. I tried to build everything on screen without taking too many steps in the wrong direction, but I tried a bunch of different things and I don't know that it necessarily helps you. It doesn't help anybody to learn anything, I, I don't think, but it might at least make you feel better to see that um, this happens to other people too. Like you think you understand an RPA tool, but then you realize you don't. And it was a huge thing for me to realize that that syntax in the selector builder, to realize that this stuff is jQuery. I mean, it, it looked like XPath expressions, and, and in a way, actually, it's it, it's very similar, but it has some differences syntactically, which explained why it had those greater than symbols. Now I want to go back and look at the Microsoft documentation to see if does it actually specifically say this is jQuery. Maybe they just expect all developers will know this, uh, but clearly not everyone will because I didn't. If that's awkward because I've used jQuery before. <laughs> It was it was a couple of years ago, but still, I, I, I do know what it is and I've used it a little, so I should have known. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you have learned something. If nothing else, I hope you were entertained or you feel better about yourself because you're not the only one feeling like the Microsoft documentation is kind of limited, probably feeling like uh, you don't really know how to use Power Automate Desktop to its fullest extent. And I would encourage you to Google uh, jQuery, w3schools.com. 
And then you can come into jQuery selectors, and this is where you can look at all the different options. But note, there's probably a bunch of other jQuery stuff that doesn't work in Power Automate Desktop. You're specifically looking for jQuery selectors. And so in these examples, everything that's inside these parentheses is what you're going to want. Well, actually inside the quotation marks, really. This dollar sign, parenthesis, quotation, and then at the end, the quotation and parenthesis is going to be not what you're going to use when you put it into the selector builder. Uh, I think that Microsoft is effectively using this to wrap whatever you type in there. I encourage you to look into that and, and learn more about it. I certainly am going to. This is pretty fantastic because at this point, there's, there's nothing you can't identify on any web page using jQuery. Just got to learn how. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.